let me tell you a story. And I am going to get to my main point. Just give me time. But I have to do things in order for you to understand what is going on. Okay. I was doing yard work. This time, it was about two months ago, I believe. And I was pouring gasoline in the lawnmower or the edger. And I had some earphones as well. So I was constantly, while my hands were dirty, <laughs> I was constantly putting the earphone in my ear and out of my ear over and over and over. So either that night or the next day, I felt some pain in my ear. And I discovered that there was a bump in there. Perhaps three weeks after that, I was doing the same thing. I poured some gasoline in the lawnmower or edger and I wasted it on my hands, some of it. And I was doing the same thing in and out, <laughs> in and out. Two days later, I really felt pain in my ear, bad. Really, really, really bad. So I went to my mom's house and I asked her, hey, can you pop it out? And she was saying that the way that it is now, it is not ready to be popped. But I am saying to myself, these things hurt, just take them out. So a week or two later, I went to where my nephew was at and he was trying to pop them out. So painful, my Lord, so, so, so painful. I believe that I am not going to do that ever again. So painful. Crazy. Anyways, what I started to do, actually, I believe I was praying when they formed in my ear, but, and I believe some pressure came off of it, but I was impatient and I wanted it to be gone. So, to jump back where I was at, so I was praying and it got somewhat better after that. But the bumps were still there. There was still pain in my ear. So I was listening to this teaching and I believe this teacher was saying something about he was praying for a person that has cancer and he was asking God to heal that person and I don't think I have the story correct but let me paraphrase it so I believe God or someone told him to curse the cancer off that person So I was thinking to myself, this person can curse cancer. So I said to myself, let me try that out as well. 
before you start to look crazy or say whatever you want in your mind or from your lips, hear me out. So I started to curse those bumps that were in my ear. And I forget the first time when I cursed it and I forget how many times I cursed it as well. I believe there were other days, other days when I cursed it as well. So, yesterday evening, I was working outside again. <laughs> and right when I finished, I felt something break off in my ear. I'm serious. And I am thinking, what is that earwax or something? I am not trying to be gross or anything like that. So this time I washed my hands and I stuck my finger into my ear. And I discovered that the bumps were gone. I am serious. The bumps were gone, are gone. Even now, I feel no bump in my ear. When you live for God, when you are following his rules and regulations, God gives you authority over demons, over evil things. We have power over evil. If the enemy is trying to give you pain in your legs, in your arms, on your head and stuff like that, you have authority to curse that pain off of you. And you may say, how do you curse it? And when we, and when we read, you are going to find out how to do it. You curse things with your words. Some people, let me choose my words wisely. Some people use words and speak negatively about themselves and about other people. And what you are doing, you are not only cursing yourself, but you are cursing other people as well you are. Our words hold power. So if you continue to say foolish things, I am just too stupid. I am ugly. I am too skinny. I am whatever. The more you say foolish things like that, the more you are cursing yourself allowing demons to intervene with you. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, verses 12 through 25. And we are not going to read all those verses. Perhaps 12 through 14, 19 through 21, and maybe 22 and 23. So to the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. So this passage is going to be speaking about Jesus and his 12 disciples. And his disciples. I don't know if it is all 12 or not. Okay. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Who is he? Jesus Christ. 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. So Jesus Christ have come to a fig tree looking for something to eat. And when he came to it, 
he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. So he came to a fig tree looking for some figs, but he only found leaves. Okay, 14. Here we go. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. So what is this saying here? Jesus cursed that fig tree. He told, he spoke to the fig tree and said, no one is going to ever eat from you again. In so many words. Now, with the earthly mind, you may say, why would a person speak to a tree? That is crazy. With the earthly mind, you are not going to understand spiritual things. This is why you have to transition your mind to the spiritual to understand things of God. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't understand things of God with the earthly mind. You have to transition your earthly thinking to spiritual thinking, reading the Bible. Okay, let's go to verse 19. And when evening was come, even was come, so evening, he went out of the city. Who is he? Jesus Christ. 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So why did this fig tree die? Take a guess. <laughs> 21. And Peter calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. So, place things in context. Can, can we curse people? Or is it right to curse people? No, I don't think it is right to curse people. For instance, let's say someone is making you angry and you say to that person, I curse you and you are never going to have any good thing in life. I believe that is wrong and you are going to reap what, what you sow from that. But as you can see here, Jesus Christ cursed a fig tree. When you are following the rules and regulations of the Bible, you have authority over demons and evil. As I stated before, this teacher cursed cancer off a particular person. So you may have a pain in your elbow, a pain in your neck, a pain in your neck, a pain somewhere. If you are following what the Bible says, you are a servant of God, Take authority over that pain, over that demon, and curse it. The pain in my ankle, I curse you right now. You are healed in Jesus' name. The pain in, in my back right now, I curse you, I curse it, that pain, in the name of Jesus. This headache that you may have, 
I curse it right now in the name of Jesus. We have authority over evil. Let me say this. Is pain of God? Is being in pain a godly quality? No. So if you have it, and if you are following God's rules and regulations, take authority over it and curse it. I am not saying to curse people. I believe cursing people is wrong. Can you curse people? Yes. But is it right? No. I believe cursing people is a sin, but you can curse evil. Instead of pleading and begging God to heal you and stuff like that, his promises are here. If you are following what God is telling you to do, he has given you power. Exercise your power. It is like you have, let's say that, and I am going to make this really simple. Let's say that you need a hammer to hammer some things down and you have the hammer and you are praying to God, God, please give me a hammer. And God is telling you, I already gave you the hammer. <laughs> the hammer is there. Take your hammer and use it. <laughs> But God, I know I have the hammer, but I want you to hammer it for me. <laughs> God's promises is already there. When you begin to live for him, following his rules and regulations, you are connected to his promises. The authority and power is already there. So why are we pleading and begging God for things that we already have? Think about that. And it's something that I had to change myself because I used to be begging and pleading God for this. And sometimes, you know, I have to catch myself when I pray because sometimes I catch myself begging and pleading and stuff like that. Hey, if I am doing what God is telling me to do, I am connected to his promises. So since I am connected to his promises, all I have to do is walk in faith and believe that I already have it and speak life into what I want done. I pray that makes sense there. So you don't have to have cancer and all of these illnesses. Follow God and curse cancer. Curse that pain wherever it is at. You don't have to have it anymore. You don't. Verse 22, I believe. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, have faith in God. 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, doubt, in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, I want to say something on this. People are very impatient. They may pray for something or curse their pain, and if their pain does not leave them that instant, they lose their faith and say that, hey, 
what Kevin said is false or what that Bible is saying there is not true because I cursed that pain and I still have pain. Like I told you, those bumps that were in my ear, when I cursed it the first time, the bumps were still in my ear. It has been more than a month that I have been cursing. I forget how long I cursed those bumps for. Maybe, I don't know, six or seven times. I don't know. And it has been over a month. Then those bumps broke off over a month, but I did not doubt. Maybe when I prayed at first, I may have doubted. I don't know. I forget. But after a while, let's say I stopped doubting. And this is what you have to do as well. Use your faith. Stop trying to get everything or get God or push God to answer your prayer within that time frame. Yes, stop placing a time frame on God because God is not going to work on your time frame. Yes, by faith, you are believing that it has happened now, but if you don't see the fruit of it, if you don't see it come to pass now, don't stop believing. Like I said, over a month. But it is out now. I don't feel it. It is gone. Look, I don't take aspirin. When I get sick, I don't go to the hospital. I pray over myself. Whether I have pain on my head, my legs, my knee, whatever. I touch where I have pain at and I say, I am healed in Jesus' name. That's it. Even when I still feel pain in those areas, I am still believing that I am healed. That is faith. I don't go to the hospital. Now, I take other people to the hospital and I try to teach those people about faith and stuff like that but it is up to them to listen or not and most times they don't listen <laughs> so I take people to the hospital but I don't get treated at the hospital nope I don't I can't remember the last time I went to the hospital for myself. Maybe mm, two years ago? Three? Maybe two or three years ago. Maybe two. Let's say two, but I think three years ago. Faith. So you can curse that pain. All you have to do is follow God. Follow his rules and regulations. That's it. If I can do it, like I say, I am no one special. <laughs> I am trying to tell you. I am just an average guy, perhaps below average or way below average. Whatever you want to say. If I can do it. You surely can do it as well. I just follow what the Bible say and I am learning more and more and more. That's it. Stop putting a time clock or stop placing a time limit on God. Because that is one quick way to lose your faith in God by placing a time limit on God. You can't do that. You can't. It is not going to work out for you. When you pray for something, believe that it has happened. No matter how long it takes, continue to believe that it is done. And from what this is saying in verse 23, 
Where is it? And this part here, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That is a promise. So why aren't these promises alive in your life now? Because you are not keeping part of your promise or how can I say it? You don't have these promises because you are not doing your part. If you keep your part, God is going to keep his part. This is telling you to not doubt, but you believe that you can doubt and God is still going to give you what you want. <laughs> it does not work that way. And you can throw hissy fits and get angry at God and say whatever God and believe that he is going to throw you some things. No. You can get mad all you want. You can throw a hissy fit. But when you are done with that, repent and follow what the Bible is saying. This is telling you that we can curse evil. Curse that cancer. Curse that HIV. Curse all of these diseases that is upon yourself or on other people. We have that ability when we are following God's rules and regulations. We have that ability. Like I said, I am just an average everyday guy now you may be average perhaps above average so surely these things can work for you if they work for me like I said pains and all this other stuff try to come to me believe me pain do try to come to me but I curse it I am healed right now, and I continue to say that. I am healed. I am healed. Even if I feel so much pain, I am healed. I am not sick. Even if I get like a headache and my, my eyes are red, or in, even if I seem sick or if a sickness is upon me, I am healed. Kevin, are you sick? Nope. I am healed. I am fine. But it looks like you are sick. I am fine. I am not sick. I am fine. I am healed. Faith. You are not lying. You are using your faith. You can't use earthly sense for spiritual things. The reason why you are always sick, the reason why always things are always going bad for you, because you are not living by the principles of the Bible. Until then, you are going to continue going through what you are going through now. This is not a hard concept here. You need to build patience. That's it. If it works for a nobody like me, a poor guy like me, per se, surely it can work for you. Make sense? I pray that it does. God bless.